What's up everybody, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports, and today we're going to give you a quick overview and a little bit of assembly on these Go Rhino Sport Bars for the F-150. Looking at both bars here right off the bat, you can see there's definitely some big physical differences. The 2.0 is a little bit larger, a little bit chunkier. You can see it rakes out more across the back of the bed. It creates kind of a larger triangle there at the front. And the actual platform for the lights at the top is also quite a bit larger. Now, one feature of this 2.0 model that the 3.0 doesn't have is you can get a separate bar that mounts in here that is electronically actuated. So you can tip it back and forth. And what that allows you to do is mount some lights up here and then electronically tip them back into the bar to kind of hide them and lower them down. So that way, when you don't need them, you're not off-roading or you're not using the lighting, it lays kind of flat with the top of the cab and it just makes it a little bit less noisy. You know, you don't hear the air moving through the lights. You're not gonna have bugs and rocks and things hitting them constantly. Just kind of a nice feature if you're wanting something that's a little bit more high end. Now, if you don't do that, obviously this top plate is already drilled out. There's slots and holes all over this thing for light bars or individual pods or whatever that may be. But that's one of the big differences here between these two bars. Another thing you'll note is on this bar, it does sit a bit higher since this one doesn't have any sort of option to add an actuator or mount anything that's gonna fold on it. It sits up just a bit higher than the cab typically and allows you a little bit more room for those lights to really project over the top of the truck. And then because it's a bit of a slimmer profile, this one's also a bit lighter weight and a little easier to move around, I think. Generally, if your bed is more complicated or you have more stuff in it or you're worried about the amount of space it's going to take up, the 3.0 is probably going to be a better fit than the 2.0 for you just because it's a bit more streamlined. Now, one other thing to note, you can see on this 3.0, we have that mesh plate in there that kind of fills out the triangle where the bar meets the bed. On the 2.0, you do get these plates. I have one sitting right here. This is just an optional piece. You really don't have to put them in on either model, but it fills that gap a little bit if you want something that looks a little bit more rugged. Some guys like to take these apart and also powder coat them or paint them or whatever to color match to the vehicle. So that's really up to you. Personally, I kind of like the look without the plate in there. I think it's really nice with just the open bars and a little bit more classic. Kind of reminds me of what you saw in the 80s on a lot of vehicles running daylighters up on these big roll bars. That's really personal preference, but they do come with the mesh. So with all these differences and kind of the details out of the way, I do want to show you a quick assembly on this 2.0 bar. Now, we're not going to install it all the way on the vehicle. It's worth noting that both of these bars do require you to actually drill into the bedsides to mount them to the truck. Now, that's only going to be about four holes in total that you have to drill. And for most people, that won't be super tricky. But if you're wanting something that's a little less permanent, then this may not be what you want to consider. So with that being said, we'll show you how to assemble this one. They use a lot of the same hardware and are generally the same steps to put them together. So we'll get that together and show you how it's done. First thing you're going to want to do is take the center portion of your sport bar, prop it up. I have it on some jack stands here, but it just makes it a little easier when it's in the air. And I like to position it in the way that it would be positioned on the truck. So facing me would be the bedside, facing forward would be the back of the cab there, pointed towards the front of the vehicle. And then you're going to have a set of bars for each side and they are side specific. So You'll see inside of the holes on these, there's a little mark for passenger and driver. This would be driver side that I'm on. And you're gonna have a shorter bar for the front that's gonna be up towards the cab. And obviously you'll have a longer bar for the back here that's kind of gonna draw down and create that triangular shape that you want. So once you have them laid out, just make sure you have the right ones for the right side because your brackets at the bottom won't line up if you use the wrong bars. And then we're also gonna have some plastic caps in here. These are gonna just kind of fill that gap and uh, help it to tighten up a little bit more nicely to the center beam. So we're gonna grab that as well as the hardware out of our kit and get this mounted up. For that hardware, you're gonna have a hex head bolt here as well as a lock washer and a regular washer on that. So we'll bring it through the slot here in the back and set our plastic cap over the top of that. And the arm itself has a threaded insert in there so we can just get this on by hand. And for now, I'm just gonna leave this hand tight so there's still some rotational room. We'll go back later and lock it down once we have everything squared up, but you don't wanna tighten this first and not be able to fit the rest of the brackets. So now we're gonna do the same thing here for this back bar. All right, there we go. Those are hand tight. Let's do the same thing on the other side.
So once you're done, you should have your bars kind of in place. The bottom should sit in a straight line and then, you know, makes a triangle shape once they're on there. Now we've got the bracket for the bottom of these that's going to attach to the vehicle. And we have two more plastic caps that are going to go in between just to, once again, kind of reduce vibration and clean up those gaps. And you'll see at the bottom of your bracket, there's usually a P or a D for passenger or driver side. So just make sure you get all that lined up the way it's supposed to be. And then we can kind of slide this into place. And for the underside of these, we're gonna use the same set of hardware with more of these hex head bolts, as well as the two washers on that. And it'll just thread up from the bottom. One other thing to note on the back of these is that there are two plates that kind of cap this off and you know, make it look a little bit more flush, but this plate is gonna attach with the same hardware that's mounting the bar. So you'll wanna run that through underneath. Now we're gonna do the same thing here on the front bar. And of course here on the driver's side, we're gonna have the exact same steps. So let's put all this together as well. So now you can see we've got the bar pretty well together. And at this point, if you're gonna install these optional mesh plates in the side, this would be the time to do it. There's gonna be just a couple Allen head screws with washers that are gonna go into these threaded inserts on the bars. So if you can pop those in there now, that's gonna be your best time to put them in. We're not doing it on this bar, so I'm gonna set that out of the way. But after you have that done or you're in this position, now you're gonna to wanna to go through and tighten all those little 14 millimeter bolts that we put through here to really lock this thing into shape. And if you are actually mounting this to a truck or putting it down, I definitely recommend that you set it on the vehicle first and kind of test fit with that and make sure you like the way it's sitting before you tighten everything because you might want a bit of play in there. And a lot of times the fitment can be really kind of hokey on these. So make sure you check that out, but we're gonna go through and tighten this all right now. So there you have it. That's a wrap on the assembly for the sport bar. Like I said, a lot of the hardware and the steps are pretty much the same between both of these bars. So neither one is too difficult to put together on the ground, but I really do want to reemphasize that when you're doing this install on your truck, you're going to want to test fit it with this sitting on the bed. Just make sure everything lines up. A lot of times the fitment of these can be kind of hokey and it's really warped if you put it down on the ground, tighten it together and then put it back up there because it's not going to line up the way it was meant to without it being on the vehicle. So certainly make sure that you do that before you jump into it. But hopefully this is a useful comparison so you can select the bar that's going to work best for your vehicle. With all that being said, if you're interested in picking up one of these Go Rhino bars, we'll have some links down in the description that you can check out that are going to shoot you over to our website. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.